Chrissa in New York celebrates the work of the Greek-born artist Chrissa, and it focuses on her time in New York City during the 1950s and 60s. Today, she's best remembered for her innovative use of found metal signage and her pioneering use of neon. When Chrissa moved to New York in the late 1950s, she was fascinated by the city's dynamic and modern environment and was particularly taken with Times Square. She immediately devoted herself to capturing the energy and excitement in her art and began incorporating lights and found letters and signs. She understood New York City in this post-war moment to represent a new cultural hub, a modern day Athens. She said that America, as seen in the lights of Times Square, was extremely poetic. I knew it had great wisdom, she remarked. It was Homeric. The show begins with some of Carissa's earliest works. Some incorporate actual scraps from Times Square, like scavenged pieces of giant signs, and she would sometimes dissect the letters or add neon elements. This process was absolutely radical and Carissa was ahead of her time in focusing on the space between art and life. No one was doing work like this. Her art materials came from the street and her collaborators were industrial craftspeople, neon benders, metal welders, in Times Square Sky from 1962, you can see how she collaged pieces of industrial channel letters. The word air in blue neon at the upper right feels like a breath of fresh air within a dense urban environment. Chris's interest in urban signs as a vital form of post-war communication led her to begin incorporating letters of the alphabet. It was a means for her to question the authority of language in 1962, Chrissa made Study on Light, one of several pieces where she arranged plaster letters as formal elements, mixing them up almost like alphabet soup. What is extraordinary is how she turns this swirl of letters into an abstract composition. Chrissa loved light. In addition to working with neon, she harnessed natural light in three-dimensional works like Arrow, homage to Times Square from 1958. Pegs protrude from the work surface. The sun, passing clouds or shadows can change the appearance of the work. This is one of her first pieces directly based on Times Square and the directional arrow is one you would find painted in the street. In the late 1950s, Carissa made a series of minimalist light catching abstract works she called the Cycladic Books. The idea was that light would spill across the blank pages, inscribing the surface like writing. Chrissa was inspired by the reductive form of ancient Bronze Age sculptures from the Aegean, known as Cycladic figures. In this exhibition, we've brought together examples of Chrissa's plaster and marble books with Cycladic figures from the Manil's collection. We wanted to show the fascinating connections between these ancient and modern works of art. Chrissa also explored language through printmaking techniques. This painting is part of a series the artist created using discarded metal printing plates, sourced from the newspapers, then printed in Times Square. She took the plates, covered them in paint, and then stamped them across her canvas to create an all-over grid. Some examples have seemingly endless repetitions of rows and blocks of language, overlaid so they're nearly illegible. Chris's newspaper works with their repurposing of mass media and the marked repetition anticipate what would later become known as pop art. The show culminates with the gates to Times Square, made over the course of three years in the mid-1960s. The artist considered this her piece de resistance. It represents her career-long desire to make work that pays tribute to the spectacle and energy of the city. It's 10 by 10 feet and made with a complex assortment of techniques. Metal and neon is combined with several modes of working. For Carissa, looking for meaning in the technological and textual jumble of Times Square was the ultimate mode of expression. The materials that structured her work, letters, newspapers, and neon signs, are things that traditionally provide knowledge, information, meaning, and clarity. 
For the artist, this stuff, the everyday, was the basis of her entirely novel approach to abstraction. One that looks out into the messy world around us with deep wonder and awe.